G'day guys, welcome back to Beers and Breakevens brought to you by Blue Wealth Property. They make investing in property easy for you. Tony and the team, they've got a couple of events coming up over the next few weeks and one tonight as well in Adelaide. So if you are an Adelaider and a super coach player, I don't know how many people fit into that Venn diagram, but there's a few around, Timmy. An Adelaider. An Adelaide -er. A Radelator. <laughs> yeah, a few people lined up for it. So um, Beers and Breakevens delves all the way into... South Australia, there you How go. Good. Yep, how good. Uh, then we've got, on the 3rd of August, we've got a couple of webinars coming your way, so brace yourself. Guru's uh, favourite. Guru's favourite. Pop up, rent money is bread money. That one is on the 3rd of August, so stay tuned for that one. As Maddie shakes me, I might look like I'm having an earthquake over here. <laughs> uh, and then we have got the 15th of August, the exclusive property <clears throat> showcase. Uh, that'll be 7 to 8 p.m. That is also a webinar on the 15th of August. So we will have uh, Tony or Mortz on the... The show soon to obviously talk about Blue Wolf, but I want to know how their super coach team's going just quietly. What, yeah. where, where, where do you reckon they ranked? I reckon t Tony would have gone too hard on Bulldogs players. Yeah, he'd have no trades. Yeah, so he'd have no trades. Would he use seven on TPJ? He'd have Blake Wilson, Drell Skelton. Yes. He'd still have Frank the Tank Pele for sure. Ethan Quai Ward's getting the boat. Yeah, so Tony would be sub 10,000. Mort. Mortz is a bit sharper, I reckon. Mm. Yeah, a bit more savvy when it comes to squad squad maintenance, and I reckon he'd be sitting in 2 or 3K. 2 or 3K, you reckon? Yeah, I've got complete faith in Mortz. <laughs> overs. Well <laughs> and truly overs. Uh, yeah, guys, so Blue Wealth Property, we've got the link in the description of the YouTube and the podcast. If you cannot find it, find it, reach out to myself or Timmy. Now, speaking of Timmy, T-Rex, got the big dog on your side today, eh? Thank God. Yeah. Needed it. Needed it, yeah. I came back um, from the little mid-season holiday, pretty deflated after one of my, my worst weeks of all time. True to form, though, the Stallions bounced back. It was a uh, it was an interesting week. I I was nervous as all hell throughout the week. Obviously, when Tyron Peachy came into the into the mm. Panthers side, I thought, <laughs> "Fuck, that's a big advantage." Tim shout out to everyone that traded in Isaac Tungo. That would have hurt. <laughs> Hilarious though. Um, and then uh, that happened. And then, mate, for me, the thing that made my week fantastic was the things that didn't happen. Sifatalakai didn't play. Mm. I didn't lose any money on him. Just the little things that sort of fell my way there. Uh, but, mate, the Isaac Tungo thing, so many people traded him in. I got so many messages of people that couldn't reverse it after. Hurts. That sucks so much. Heaps. Just yeah. the, the brutality of that late game in the round as well, Penrith being the second last game. Funny how things pan out. Like, you, you can look at it however you want to. Like last weekend I had this trade plan to get Latrell and Payne Hassing this week into pretty straightforward trades that were like looked pretty well rock solid. Oh, yeah, this impacted you pretty heavily. Big time. Yeah. It, it all did. Yeah. <clears throat> and like people saying, oh you know, Tim's got lucky, Peach is playing against um, the doggies happy days. It actually ended up not working out that well for me because when the troll got ruled out, I needed him to drop that forty to fifty K even to thirty K to make my things happen, yeah, which yeah, yeah. looked every chance. <clears throat> not only that Peachy, who wasn't playing, had a massive break even of like 130 or 140. So when he played, he actually dropped about 40K. <laughs> yeah, right. And I've got Jesse Ramian. I went his little pod in the back end of the buy period, and he's been solid, especially when I've played him. I really wanted to play him because he was coming up against that left edge of Manly. Yep. Really keen to. But when Peachy got named, like, because again, because it was late in the round and a lot of my CT dubs already played, I had to sit Ramian out. He actually outscored Peachy. Not by much, so not it? by much, about yeah. ten or so. But there was the thirty, forty k peach price swing because yeah, originally yeah. I think I traded peach out. I think I, I traded him out. So it was like the opposite happened with Sivitalikai <clears throat> and yeah, Peachy for yeah. us. Yeah, so yeah. look, Peach is again playing this week. It's a nice matchup with the Sharkies. So like it'll work out okay, but it has impacted my trade plans this week. Well, it's interesting, like that meant that you had to change your avenue to, to get to Latrell and Sivitalikai not playing. I thought I'd have to trade Gutho to, to mm. Latrell. Now I've just been able to go Sivitalikai straight to Latrell and keep Gutho. Um, imagine something going your way, not mine. <laughs> Unbelievable, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, a really good week in Supercoach. I managed to go up 100 spots. I'm just sitting in the same spot. But I feel like this week with the Warriors by, that's one big advantage we've got we've never had. Your SJs, your DWZs, these sort of guys. So I'm hoping this yeah. is the week we make some moves. It's been tough, but this week we'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll enjoy it. not owning them. Uh, yeah, 12.98 right. for the Stallions, so 6,100 overall. It went up about 1,100 spots. So yeah. needed it, really needed it. If it was the other way, I'd be in all sorts. But 
Uh, heading in the right direction. We'll get to my trades pretty shortly, but I think my team's pretty well locked and loaded with five, about five to go after this week. So I'm um, nice. quietly confident, but as I said last week, it's all about results, not... And that puts us, there's 119 points between us yeah, now. Great. So I think it was 177 last week. You roped in 50-odd or whatever. So 119, that is super exciting. Mm. And we'll talk about our trades soon because we're, uh, we're making some moves. And I think we, we've both, we've got to talk about our plan over the next few weeks, which I would highly fucking advise all of you, sit down and work it out. Work out what it's going to look like over the next few weeks. Yeah, it'll, I said the, I mentioned it last week in the, the deep dive, but the the hour you put in will save you about eight hours over oh. the next four to six weeks sorting your trades out, mate. I- invaluable. Like you just, I, yeah, you've you've got to have a plan of how you're going to do it, especially with guys like Tino returning. Payne Hart's got a buy coming up. <laughs> The um, buyers, the buyers are the big one. They're, yeah. they're going to catch some people really short, and especially when you get to that last week when Parramatta's got the buy and South Sydney have the buy before yeah. that, you've got to be people aware. out of trades. Yeah. All right. So shout out to Raging Pole, who we met you mm. or your mate. His mate. I want to say his mate. Yeah. Yeah. Met his mate at uh, the beer food. What a day! He made an appearance too. How good? Yeah. Look, I sucked it up. Um, my booze ban for post-holiday lasted all of about 18 hours. <laughs> I had two beers at the footy, mate. That's, at that day out, sun shining, hill parked, Henson Park, footy on, couldn't have been any better. Had to have a couple. Yeah, you enjoyed yourself. Now, speaking of who had a couple, uh, your club there, Wes, <coughs> I think they had a couple before they went on the field just quietly. Yeah, know, they, they had a couple of... A couple of tries put on in the I made a couple Devs. of tackles too. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a tough day out. The Devs love to, <clears throat> love to come home strong. We're just we're peaking for finals time, mate. They had a huge start of the season, led the comp. I think they've lost four on the trot, but they'll be back. They'll be back. I don't know about that. I had, uh, I had a bloke come up to me at the tent and he said, oh, do you know who the um, centre is for them? I went, no, who he goes? It's uh, Sasai Fecky. And I went, oh, my God, watch this. I'll tell Matty the water boy, Sasai Fecky's over there. And he goes, will he care? I go, <laughs> will he care? <laughs> I turn to Matty, I go, do you know who the centre is? He goes, no, who? I go, Sai Fecky. He goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> the guy's like, I don't think Sai Fecky was that excited about yeah. playing. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah, yeah, young fella on the wing fullback for West. Lockie Hurst, bit of a could be anything, mate. Yeah? Yeah. There's a few in that game, actually. <coughs> DR yeah. and uh, West, two great sides. Uh, now, shout out to Kalen Pinger. Great name, great name. <laughs> shout out to you, Chris. You win, brother. Uh, he had the top score of this week. Not a sniper team either. Ranked pretty high. Uh, 1,456. What a nudge. Shout out to the guy who came sixth this week. The Huru Gurus, which are that's going to be my team name next year. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so great name there. So, yeah, Chris, um, reach out. Reach out. Uh, beers and breakevens at gmail.com. Hotmail, Gmail, Gmail. Com, at gmail.com. I just went back to year nine for a second there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I will send all that. We're actually getting more of the hats made. Um, I realised the other day, Timmy, when we went on the country tours, we got a little bit hat happy handing them out. So, we're going to run, running low. low. Yeah, we're running low. So, there'll be more coming. Stay tuned. Uh, and of course, the <laughs> overall winner this year takes home the Stal. It is broken into many a piece. Uh, I'm not going to blame anyone, but if I was to blame one complete nutter fuckwit that's probably listening to Eminem right now, <laughs> I'd probably blame Matty the Waterboy. Yeah. I mean, he Are you bro- on camera? You got anything you want to say? I, I don't ha- know. I have to sit here and defend myself every week. I didn't do anything. Do you reckon he did it intentionally or was it an accident? The first two times accidentally. The third time, I think it was, yeah. it was intent in it. Yeah. Yeah. The third time, I didn't even know there was three. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Well, every week we come in and that poor old jockey loses another limb, so it's been at least four times. Typical South Sydney, we get to the end of the season, he falls into a, <laughs> into a thousand bits. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, let's get stuck into our team list for this week. Mate, Thursday night, this is going to be a cracker. Brisbane and the Roosters from the Gabba. How good? Yeah, could be a cracker. It, if should the, be. If the Roosters have even slightly turned a corner. I uh, I didn't watch Bloke on Monday. I haven't heard your takes for the Roosters back or not? No. No. Don't think so? Mate, it, it, it was a Titans bed shit rather. The Roosters look great, but oh, far out. We spoke pre-show, but it was really disappointing from the Titans. Like, they'd be, had a lot more of a steelier edge to them the last couple of months. You thought they'd turned a bit of a corner and then it was just like back to square one. Yeah. So, and... I certainly haven't seen enough from the Roosters, particularly the second half when, after a tough season, you'd hope they went on with it. I've seen nothing to suggest that it was the Roosters turning a corner. 
I hope for the competition's sake and the fight for that top eight and more so that I'm a James Tedesco owner that they have turned a corner, but I'm not convinced. Yeah, we might have a couple of James Tedesco owners at the uh, bar soon. Oh, shock, you following me into a trade. <laughs> uh, I bet Ken right. Murray's coming in for you as well. <laughs> hmm. uh, for the Broncos, Pia Kuro comes back on the edge. Tommy <clears throat> Flegler returns through the middle. Dean Mariner on the sting. For the Chooks, Victor Radley in 13. And, mate, Walker has been named to return soon. Um, <laughs> could he be the pot of pods for the back end of the season, Sammy Walker? They've not one I'll be doing, but I've got enough trades to bring him in and out twice. So I'll yeah, especially it. at halfback yeah. when uh, you, you're dropping a big gun to do it, imagine. And the well, imagine if you get to the last week of the season and Hines is rested, Cleary's rested. Sammy Walker. Moses is rested. They could, like, they could all be rested that way. Yeah. All of a sudden, I could reach out to the teenager. Oh, They've got, uh, after this week, once they get the Broncos out of the way, they've got a good draw as well, the Roosters, yeah. so... Be interesting. Um, all right, Tigers v South Friday, 6 p.m. <coughs> this one's coming to you from Tamworth. Uh, for the Tigers, a couple of changes here. Uh, nothing that really impacts us, though. Not for Luma and Staines on the wing. Uh, Stafford Tyre and Tupu in the centres. Brooks in the seven. Dane Laurie in the six. I would like to officially welcome Dane Laurie to the Flaming Milwaukers. Came into my uh, draft <laughs> team this morning. So, Godspeed, son. Uh, Rabbitohs, Latrell Mitchell returns for the eighth week in a row. Hopefully, he plays this week. That'll be great. Doesn't it feel like it's been three months of him coming back next week? Origin 1, Origin 2. It's been a nightmare. I'm so excited. Fe- it to see doesn't him play. feel like it. It has. It has. It's literally been three months of he's back next week. I am so excited to see him play. <laughs> How are you feeling about him, Matty? You keen or what? I'm so You're excited. Fan, I'm so excited, obviously. But uh, Demetrio confirmed this week that he's in. So, and I, I, there was no point playing him. Well, if he's not 100, 100%, why, why'd they rest him for 11 weeks? He might as well wait till he's 100% so he can beat up the Tigers. Beat up the Tigers, <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. NRL yes. physio threw something out in his podcast. Uh, I saw it on Twitter last night. Uh, and physio is bringing him in. So regarding any concerns around re-injury or what level will he be at, if physio, who is a very good super coach as well, he doesn't admit he's a humble man, but if he's bringing him in, that's enough to allay fears of uh, aggravation. So, Not to mention, Physio is also bringing him in when he's got a grand total of one trade <laughs> yeah. left. So that fills me with confidence. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So Tane Milne, he's still on the wing. No Ty Munro. Uh, I think Ty Munro, he, I think he's been out for two weeks now. I keep hearing he's not too far away, but this is the game I wanted him for. I really, I, I actually, with everyone else who's lacking trades and with Mulatalos and Talakai's floating around squads, I'm okay with uh, Ty Munro missing this week. A little bit the same. I was going to sit some genuine quality to play him this week in my side. And with the Bunnies run, I'm a little bit the same. Obviously, all right ownership at the moment, but as people are going to other trades and other ways to free up cash, like I think people going to Nuffs because they want the dual position or whatever, I'd still be going Ty Munro, whether he comes back or not, because he's bottom dollar, so playable in some of these matchups to come. Mate, I, I was thinking I'd play him this week over, I don't know, maybe like a Moe Janu. <laughs> I was seriously considering it. So that's worked out well. Jai Arrow back to the middle. Jacob Host, he returns to the edge. Uh, the late game, Friday night. It's going to be a cracker as well. How's this weekend? We've got Marvel Stadium. We've got the Gabba. We've got Tamworth. Yeah. Uh, we've got, where else? We've got a game at Bundaberg. Um, got to play. Got a game in Canberra too. We're giving everyone a run this week. It's good. We should do a we should do a beers and break him for regional tour to Tamworth for the weekend and do a big get together at the bar there. It'll just be you and me sitting at the bar <laughs> having beers. <laughs> Great game of footy though. Uh, Storm Eels Friday night from Marvel Stadium uh, for the Storm. Very interesting, mate. Two new centers. Obviously, Remus Smith has gone down injured. Uh, the one thing I remember last year was when Remus Smith got injured. I sort of went, ah, they'll be all right. They were not all right. Mm. That, that edge in defence was in all sorts. I'm interested to see how they go. And uh, Justin Olam, reading between the lines, it looks like he's been dropped. Sounds like any injuries or anything. Huge, Very isn't interesting. It? So you got Marion Seve and uh, Young Tottenham Mapay coming in. Two guys that I think are underrated. I, I'm a big fan of Young Tottenham Mapay. I wouldn't be looking at him yeah. super coach wise, but he can play. Yeah, he goes good. And, and I mean, brings the Eels right into this contest. The big one is Nelson Soft Solomona being out. Yeah. Uh, fi- discated finger or something. So he's had there's an indefinite time frame on. He might be back in a week. I don't know, but I just think there's a huge impact on Harry Grant. And Harry Grant owners, nothing changes. But if you're running a decent hooking combination at the moment, with Nass out, other forwards out, like even Justin Olam is so big for their go forward coming off their own line. I, I wouldn't be rushing to get Harry Grant in. I don't think at the moment. Best of luck to that surgeon that did his finger. He could have mistaken it for a fucking leg. <laughs> 
Big bit of gear. Uh, Tommy Eisenhuth <laughs> comes in on the edge, and we've got Eli Katoa. He's returning uh, via the bench as well. So, yeah, Nass is the big one. And I'll tell you who else that <laughs> impacts massively, Jimmy. Harry Grant. That's my biggest worry. Are you all there? What? Did you just say that? I just went on a, like a two-minute chat about how it's going to impact Harry really? Grant. Really? Oh. What was going on Great in your mind. What was going on in your head? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's your. I agree with you. There's your real. For, <laughs> good to know you listen to me when we. Ch- this is what happens. You get a lead on me, and you just don't take anything I say, and you consider it far out. That's we all good? the time. Oh. <laughs> uh, for the eels. How many rounds left? <laughs> for the eels, Andrew Davy comes in to replace Sean Lane. Hey, what about Joey Lussick? One of the great resurrections of all time. Coming back from the Super League. Obviously, Joshy Hodgson, it looks like. Has that been announced yet that he's retiring? Or Not it's, official. But it's, yeah. Yeah, so too bad the way that that career has ended. Um, champion player, I suppose. You, you, you can probably talk more. But I think I think at his best, he genuinely pushed Cam Smith for a year or two there. Yeah, he was he was magnificent, mate. Awesome fellow. I really hope it's not the end of his career, but it sort of sounds like it will be. He's achieved plenty in the game. Um, I'd love to see him, see him get a, a bit of a swan song back home in England. I, I know... Mm. Pretty settled over in Australia, but if it was one season. Um, but, mate, yeah, Joey Lussick's back in. Yeah. Wow. Never Joey Lussick. <laughs> Just on Josh Hodgson, too. I remember when he first signed for the Raiders. Do you remember in that preseason, the first thing we saw of Josh Hodgson was him at a party running through a door? <laughs> yeah, And then he never right. got in trouble ever again. I remember when he signed and I went, oh, no, this is not going to end well. Yeah. And he was the complete opposite. He's the ultimate leader, Josh Hodgson. Yeah. So well respected by the entire group, the entire club. When he was down at the Raiders, I, by the sounds, were pretty similar up at Parramatta. Well, they'd re-signed him until this recent injury, hadn't they? They'd, yeah. they'd given him extension, so that says a lot about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think he'd taken a player option. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, also, shout out to that door. I don't think it's with us anymore. <laughs> um, all right, let's move to the Raiders v. the Knights, Saturday, 3 p.m. from Did we want to chat stadium? first about... Um, NASA's impact on Harry Grant. Or? <laughs> <laughs> that was not bad from you. <laughs> Raiders night, Saturday, 3 p.m. GIO Stadium for the Raiders. Uh, nothing really stood out to me in these team lists. Anything to you? Uh, Knights, yeah, essentially nothing's changed. And the Raiders, super catch wise, they're so uninteresting. If you've got yeah. Taps or Horsburgh, you hold on to them, probably don't rush to get them in. That's it. Yeah. All right, let's move to the 5.30 game. Dragons v Manly from Wynn Stadium. Uh, for the Dragons, Moses and Bai, he has gone over to the Super League. Connor, no, last name starts with them. I don't know how to pronounce it, but he's making his debut. He's been uh, the New South Wales Cup 9 for the vast majority of the season, so congratulations to him. Um, thankfully, I changed uh, Jacob Little. I swapped out Jacob Little last week, so it's not chaos. You're a pelican. How about... How, how oh, ner- yeah, we've got to talk about how, that. We'll ner- talk about that how nervous were you... Mm. When Harry Grant threw those knees into the back of whoever it was, KP or someone, got put on report. I know you've got trades. Mate, oh, I sat there and I thought, fuck, I'm only going to have 14 trades. What am I going to do here? <laughs> Real panic stations. It's Jeez. how you set up a team. Oh, to me, trust me. mate, I, I don't like it, but you do you. I will do, mate. Don't worry about that. How many you got left? Pre uh, this week? Pre this week, 10. So I'm still in double digits. That's so absurd. Yeah. Uh, well, I won't be soon, but anyway. Is it a case Seagulls. of me going away and you just didn't want to trade while I was away? You're too scared to make your own decisions? <laughs> I had no one to hold my hand. Couldn't turn my computer on. Uh, for the Seagulls, LA and Paseca going, going. Gone. Gone. Uh, Lodge, he comes in to start. Toa Sipley in the side as well. We'll talk about Matty Lodge soon because he has caught my eye. And I wish I already had Walker or Latrell because I would have seriously considered him. But we'll talk about him soon. Yeah, all right. all right. Hold your horses. Penrith Sharks, Saturday night, 7.35 p.m. from Blue Bet. For the Panthers, Peachy still uh, in the side at centre. Hosking, he comes <coughs> onto the bench. No Spencer Lenu. Jamin Salmon once again playing second row in New South Wales Cup. For the Sharkies, Colhoun. Christ, that was short-lived. Shout out to the people that traded him in last week. I do believe he's suspended. Suspended, isn't yeah. he? Okay. For a week. Still, it'll be interesting that Wade Graham, though, was rested last week. Yeah, is it his spot? Uh, yeah, like I still think it is an AA nightmare, but yeah, we'll see. Wade Graham comes up in that edge. Dale Finucane is out. So Cam McInnes in the 13. Cam McInnes, another one people are, ask, are asking about. Mm. Um, Sivit Talakai, named on the bench. We'll see if he plays this week. Obviously didn't last week. All right, Sunday afternoon, we're going to Bundaberg. How good. Mm. Dogs v. the Finns for the Canterbury Bulldogs. Uh, Fox and Wilson on the wing. Um, Skelton drops out of the side, Timmy. This will be interesting, though, because you've got Fox, who's the left winger, Wilson, who's a left winger, Skelton, who's a right winger. 
all the other guys on the extended bench were named in the Bulldogs just the Wales Cup except Skelton. So it'll be interesting to see what they do there. So if you are a Wilson owner and you're thinking, fuck, he's going to be an A nightmare, I reckon there's a chance that Skelton plays right wing this week. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Skelton's been given his opportunity and been really good in that time, in tough games. It's worth persisting with giving him a bit of a crack, isn't it? I think so, mate. Yeah, oh, like what, what do you got to so. lose? Yeah, exactly right. Uh, Burns returns at centre. Big plus for Canterbury. Fuck, he's a good player, Braden Burns. I've always been a Braden Burns man. It's just to give it to him early and something will Yeah, he's good. There. Yeah. Toby Sexton returns at seven. Reed Marnie back at nine. Uh, did we rip Canterbury to shreds on Monday for whatever the fuck they did with Reed Marnie on the weekend? I couldn't work out what I was watching. That was bizarre. Yeah. Well, he was injured. Yeah. He, injured. Only, he only played because so low on Sure, troops. but why are you playing him at lock? Yeah. He gave away three obstruction penalties. He didn't even know where to stand, the poor bastard. I, I know, I know, like, he's playing injured on the weekend. It's it's not been Reed Marnie's year, unfortunately. Unfortunately, no. Yeah. no I don't think they did him any favour. No, the no, they didn't help him. Very oh, you're not going to make finals if he's injured. I know you got no troops, but just give him a spell. Give him a spell. Give someone else a shot. Um, Kikau and Preston are <coughs> in the second row, both returning this week. Uh, for the Finns, Hammer back at fullback. Tessie New comes in the wing. Aitken and Tafade in the centres. Nick Arima at six. Jeremy Marshall King at hooker. Kenny Bromwich at 13, Lemuelo staying on the edge. I should have just gone through the team list there. JMK, what a bizarre one this is. Just being in and out. One minute he's out for the season, then he's back, then he's yeah, hearing yeah. different things every week. Yeah, something new yeah. each round, isn't it? He's so important. Good to see him back, though. It's, the games you have seen him missing this year shows how important he is to that side. Without a doubt. Uh, last game of the week, Titans-Cowboys coming in from Seabus at 4pm <laughs> for the Titans. Uh, more of the same. Mate, Mo Fodder Wake it. We'll talk about him soon, but we just got his scores up. Yeah, holy moly. Jesus. He can play. He's flying under the radar, isn't he? Big time. Uh, for the Cowboys, uh, Nanai, he is out. So Finney Fuiaki comes in on the edge. This is weirdly one of the most exciting things of the weekend to me. Yeah. I can't wait to watch this kid go. Griffin Neem out as well. Do you want to chat about Finney Fuaki now or later? Yeah, shoot. Yeah, I don't think we've got any questions on him, so go. <sighs> He's interesting, mate. He's, two, he's 277K. Only, oh, it's a shame he's not dual position, but only at 2RF. But, you know, close to bottom dollar. Uh, Nanai's out for four to six weeks. Helam Lukey's still out. Due back next week, I believe, yeah. but not guaranteed. And do they rush him back in? How many minutes does he play? I, I don't know. Just a sneaky one that if you are downgrading to enough, as I said, I know he doesn't have the duels, but... There's a lot of upside in this bloke that, you know, you'd ideally want to see a week with him. Break even to 35, so you don't have to go this week if you are looking to free up cash, but he could be a serious super coach player at a bargain price. He could be, mate. I'm just um, just trying to get up his uh, Queensland Cup stats. The only mm. thing that worries me is that he hasn't played all that much, all that many minutes this year, so I question how long that's going to be. The most minutes he's played in the game has been 40. Mm. So I think it would be a big <coughs> uh, jump there to... For him to play big minutes there, but mate, he, he's got so much talent. He might only need forty minutes. Yeah, to blow it away. Look, I wouldn't go this week, but we could be having a big conversation about him this time next week. If yeah. he comes out, plays big minutes, and kills it with that thirty-five break, he's not going up much in price. Real option. Helam Lukey just worries me though, for sure. Yeah, coming back, yep. but um, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. If he was bottom dollar, geez, he'd be interesting to grab this week. Then hopefully Lukey comes back, and it could just be. A little enough play yeah. for you there. Interesting. Um, all right. We'll continue with the stats deep dive that we've just <coughs> kicked off. Mate, the first guy you want to talk about is Reese Walsh. Uh, geez, he's caught my attention. If he didn't have that buy coming up in a few weeks, I think I would be going guffo to Reese Walsh very soon. Yeah, so the draw is quite concerning. Roosters, Cowboys, Eels, buy Raiders and Storm. Really difficult. He's very cheap at 666k. <laughs> I went back and had a bit of a look at his form against top eight sides this season, the current top eight. It's okay. So he he went went big last weekend, the Bunnies, 111, technically coming ninth now. Go back through his scores. Round 14, Cronulla, 65. Round 12, Penrith, 42. Round 11, Storm, 67. Round 9, Rabbitohs, 23. Round 8, Eels, 38. Round 6, Raiders, 86. You add in here, and this inflates it a little bit, but the Cowboys in round two, he scored 105, and that was when the Cowboys were in absolute all sorts and one of the worst sides in the competition. So against top eight sides this season, he's averaging, current top eight sides averaging 67 points per game. 
If you take out the Cowboys game in round two, maybe a little bit unfair on him, but he's averaging 61 per game. Now, they're playing all top eight sides on the run home, plus the bye. I do think, and we chatted about this on the play with Potty last night, he's also grown an arm and a leg with every single game he's played this season. Like His confidence is up. The Broncos are firing. He's getting better. So it doesn't mean that he can't... Like I would back him to average more than 6-7 on the run home, but the stats aren't terrific. What do you think? I'll be perfectly <clears throat> honest with you. As long as he isn't playing Penrith, yeah. I'm not overly concerned. I, I agree with you. That, that run home isn't ideal, but the Roosters don't worry me. Parramatta don't overly worry me, to be honest with you. Your Raiders are, are, are probably a slightly tough one because they just always find a way to fucking hang in the contest. They're a weird one, the Raiders. Melbourne don't worry me in the slightest. Someone's asking me about... about the thing Kate. that worries me about Melbourne is will he play in round 27 or not? Or do they just rest their guys? Yeah, good point. Yeah. The, the Raiders... Are, at Suncorp. Yeah. They'll have a game at Suncorp the week after anyway. That's my worry with him. Yeah. But is he young enough and he's just had a three-week spell? I don't the three-week spell's huge, isn't yeah. it? Um, yeah, look, I, I think he's absolutely a, a great trade-in option. I just think when you wedge the buy in between that tough draw, I think I'm going to – well, I don't think I am. I'm going to target fullbacks with better draws, especially you get to this time of year, teams really start to drop off. We're already seeing it. The Dragons, I know they won on the weekend, but Dragons, Tigers, Doggies, there's going to be blowout games and some of these – Players with the softer draws can go big. Yeah. Like a player like, say, Latrell, even a Teddy in softer games could go there 150 plus. Is Walsh going to do that against these sides? I'd be surprised. There's no reason why he can't average 85 to 90 on the run home. But yeah, I, I'm going, I'm chasing the draw. That is one thing. The more I look at it, mate, the more I look at that buy in round 25 and round 27 if he gets rested. In the last three weeks, he could play one game. Yeah. I, I do think. Said by around 25, he's already missed three weeks on the trot. Because of that buy there, he probably plays the last two weeks. Time will tell. Yeah. I mean, like, even for injury wise, but just would shock if Reese Walsh went and got and did something. Or, you know, he can get himself into trouble yeah. as well. I, I don't know. I, I'd be tempted if I Yeah, was you know, mate, I, I'm the biggest advocate of resting <laughs> ever. So I would, but. We'll see. Yeah, interesting. But something that you need to keep in mind with all your trades, think about where that team's going to be sitting at the end of the season. It doesn't mean that they're definitely going to rest, but there's guys that have potential to be rested in certain teams. And, you need and, to and looking at right. look at your team and your Eels players, if you are someone who's going to stuff it, I'm going to stick with Gutho. He's killing it. It doesn't matter who the opposite position is. If you were to be running, say, a Walsh and him combination, then Walsh got rested, you wouldn't have a fullback round 27. So yeah. you've just got to consider these things. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> speaking of, mate, James Tedesco, he's one that I'm very confident plays. Every game from here on mm. out. Tell us about Teddy. Six game average, 93 points. Stop it. This is an out of form, in a tough patch. James Tedesco in a rooster side that may or may not have turned a corner. Whether they've turned a corner, I'm not sure. But that first half of footy against the Titans has got to give him a bit of a shot, an injection of belief in them, doesn't it? So, yep. you know, everyone's talking about Latrell, Walsh. Drinky, all these gun fullbacks, KP, Teddy, who's been there, done it year after year, he's on fire. Yeah, I um, I will be ser- – I'm thinking I'll, – I'll talk about my trades in a moment, but I've got Clint Gutherson, who um, I think I'll hold him for this week. He plays the Dragons <coughs> next week, a nice matchup. I will be seriously considering after that going Gutho to Teddy to free up cash to get like a Tino or someone yep. as well. So Such a great position fullback this year because – there are five or six different players, you throw sort of Dylan Edwards into the mix, who can go their 150 plus on their day. You can only have two of them, three to pinch if you've got KP at 5'8". Yeah. It is the position that I believe will decide the overall winner and head-to-head grand final winners. Yeah, for sure. You look at Teddy in two <coughs> weeks' time when I'm planning on trading him in, he'll go Dolphins, Parramatta, Tigers, and he'll finish with the South Sydney Rabbitohs. <laughs> who, I don't care how the Roosters are going. I think they will get up for that game. Yeah. They'll perform. Hey, Matty, where's your, your game in the last round? Where is that? The last round of the season against yeah. Roosters? Yeah. Uh, a core. A core, is it? Yeah. Okay. All right, sweet. I like that. I like the Teddy play. Um, all right, mate. Uh, <coughs> Sua Lee. Jeez, we've had some arguments about Sua Lee over the years. Let's open another one. Mm. Shoot. Just a lot of people asking about him. Yeah. I mean, back to the wing, his best position, looks good and kills it. 
the one that stood out for me, look, look I, I'm not advocating for him as, as a rush, rush in by, but you just mentioned the Roosters draw. Back to the wing, I think, the last two weeks, 85 points against the Titans, but his base was 38 points. Whereas all season it's been terrible, just takes on the lot, has a stack more runs, will finish off tries, so much better. If you're looking for a pod for the run home at 486k goal kicking for the Roosters, is a way of freeing up cash and he's very playable in 17s. Not for me, but I can see why people would do it. Yeah, fair shout. Uh, Tyrone Peach, you mate? The Peach. Oh, bless the Peach. Seven 80 minute games this season, 69 point per game average. And that's the, I said it last night on the potty, and I've said it time and time again, but it's not necessarily a reflection of a player what their average is for the season or this or that, particularly for your team. It's how do they score when they were in your team. Yep. So a week like a few weeks ago where he came off the bench, played a handful of minutes and drops his season average. No one played him who owned him that week. But of his 80-minute games, I reckon I've played him most from this season. So he's averaging around that 69 points for me this season. Got me through a tough buy period. The one thing about him this week, I will say, which concerns me a little bit, is that Penrith are going up against the Sharkies who have that horrific left edge. Not Peachy's edge. He'll be on Penrith's left. So it bodes super well for Nathan Cleary, Stephen Crichton, Brian Toto, that whole edge. Do they just go there all game and tear him to pieces? It could easily happen. Potentially, but I just think with Peach, if he's just given three opportunities, you know he's not going to pass the football. Yeah, He'll turn one of them into something, I reckon. Yeah. So oh, I was very nervous watching the other day. I'll tell you what, but based on how the first 10 minutes of that game went, I think he finished on 77? Yeah, what? 78, I think. 78. I was stoked. Every time you send shit out on social media about me going good, and you often do it at half time or something, it just turns it. The super coach goes, oh, let's look after Guru. You did that. And I don't think he, I don't think he or Toto put a point on in the second half for me. Matty, has, has he tuned this violin or what? <laughs> it's got, it's got to work out the violin the last month. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speaking of the Panthers left edge, I love this shout. I absolutely love it. And there's a few people uh, in the questions that were looking at him as a pod. Scotty Sorensen, your mate, flying. Frustrating, Scotty Sorensen, because love the bloke as you know. But there's just been job security. When I say job security issues, 80-minute back row, week in, week out issues everywhere. He's always going to be in the team, but the chat's been... Because there's so much back row depth, it's been... Does he go... Like Liam Martin, Zach Hosking, Luke Garner to a lesser degree now, obviously. Does he go back to a 50-minute bench player sort of thing, in which case, crueling his super coach cancels? It hasn't happened. He's mm. kept that 80-minute role. In 13 games this season, playing 59-plus minutes, he's averaging 72 points per game. Wow. It's inflated by a 175, but the other thing about that 175 is it shows that he has huge upside in this team. He scored two tries on arguably the best edge in rugby league. Mm. It's going to happen. Yeah, exactly right. right. So, like, the, the point is that I think even there's still concerns because he's played 80 minutes for so long in these big minute games and got them through when other players have had rest and whatnot. Does he get some fewer minutes and some early showers in the back end of the season? Potentially, but based on that, even if he only plays 60 minutes and goes off 20 minutes early or whatever, he's still scoring well enough. <laughs> I think it was, and if you have a look at the last two years and they won the comp, they've sort of, they've limited Liam Martin's minutes heading into finals mm. and then given him 80 minutes come game time. They did the same thing on the weekend as well. They took Liam Martin off early. Luke Garner jumped on that edge. He hasn't done it with Sorensen all that much. I think he's played less than 80 minutes twice in the last eight weeks, and they've played. They've had two buys in that period. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if towards the back end, if he does start to get a little bit of yeah. a spell. I agree. And it's the thing we've said all season with him. There's just always, oh, what about spells and changing roles? And it just hasn't happened. But my gut feels the same, is that yeah. it's like since round... Basically since round four, he's played every game. Yeah. And even since round eight, he's played 59 plus minutes in all of those, generally close to 80 minutes. So he looks a prime candidate for a rest at some point. Yeah, I So agree. I wouldn't do it for that reason. But as I said, we keep saying it all year and he's killing it. And I mean, they have all, like, like they've got Hosking, they've got Garner, they've got Salmon. Like you could play Peach there if you want to. They've got so many options that they could run with there. So yeah, <laughs> I'm... But in saying that, mate, if we get to the end of the season, we look at him and go, well, he was fine the entire season. He was the one we should have gone for. It won't surprise me. Yeah. 
He's such a, such a good player, Scotty Sorensen. Um, that's all your players, mate. What's your topic? Are we gonna will we go through our trade situations? And yeah, my, my topic is just having a yarn about about trades because I've got two vastly different options which uh, could have a big impact on my season, whichever way I go. So, dare I say it, mate? I'm, I'm just looking for a bit of uh, insight from from the great Rue. I'm here. Talk to me. Option you A. Enough how your hook ever starts. <laughs> <laughs> Hooker out, slown in, <laughs> slown in via Jules. So option A, as it stands, I'm going into the week with I think about 360k in the bank and six trades. You only got six. Six is good. Oh, You've mean, just got a sickening amount. I'm seeing all these people. By 5,000 plus standards. <laughs> oh, you'd want to hope I don't come home, mate, when I do. <laughs> option A. So... Latrell is coming into my team. Yep. Do, you, do you think he has to come in this way? I don't think he has to. But at 6K, I'm like, what have I got to lose? Yep. If he comes out and gets injured or doesn't, he doesn't look fit and he gets 30 points, I'm like, sweet, I dropped to 7,000. But if it does pay off, the upside is enormous. Yep. So why not? Yep. I've also got a fullback slot free because I've got Garrick there at the moment. So I'm not trading at anyone gun to do it as such yeah so yep trail mitt he's not a not a must have but looks good to me with that rum so i can trade any of like tyrone peachy jacob preston a few other options to upgrade to him let's say it's jacob preston for example i'm gonna do preston straight to latrell in one hit use only one trade this week i am i have depth i've got guns across my entire bench Give or take Tyrone Munro, who's certainly not a gun, but again, very playable. Except front row. Front row, I'm weak. I'm actually playing front row short this week because I've got Tarpany and Torhu Harris. The Latrell not playing last week and then Peachy playing cost me going like a Preston straight to Payne Haas, mm. which is a bit of a kick in the nuts. I can play a front row short this week and my AE is out of, like, they're good players. It'll be like Piacura or Ramian. The worry is Renato Molitalio against the Panthers. Yep. But even then, if you can jag anything, hopefully even 30-odd, yep. uh, not the worst, worst result. It gives me a free VC loop on Latrell Mitchell or Cody Walker, mm. which is pretty great. It, it's not a completely free crack at it because I still take my lowest from my bench, but a pretty good go at it. Option two. But, I mean, you, you were going to take your lowest from your bench anyway. Yeah, but so when, I'm, when I say it's not a free VC loop, it's not like I've got only one player on the yeah, bench yeah, where I'm yeah, getting yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Option two is that I go say, again, I could do a combination of people. I, I could do like Preston via Jules to Latrell, and then I could do Torhu Harris to Payne Haas. Really solidifies my team, but it involves two trades and it gets rid of the semi-free crack at the VC loop with Latrell Mitchell. I am leaning towards option one, playing the front row is short and going down down that avenue. What do you think? I would do the same. Yeah. Hey, how convinced are you on Payne Haas? Like, mm. I, I'm very confident I'm not going to own him this year. I would like to own him, mm. but I'm not... The reason I want to get him in is because, I mean, I'm a sh front row short this week and I'd just like to uh, solidify my front row a little bit. But, uh, you know, again, we've spoken a little bit off air, but I'm also happy to run without him this week and then with my remaining trades, look to get Tino in when he's back in a couple of weeks there. So then even, like I said, if Trell can come out and ton up, I do the loop on him. I don't really need that second front rower anyway. The issue becomes... Can you do? Can you watch Latrell before you make this? No, because Payne House plays Thursday. First, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a bugger. If Bunny's played before the Broncos and Trell went poorly and then, say, the Sharks he's played and Willie Taylor got seven, I'm like, cool, I'll just pull the trigger and get myself the extra 100-odd points. But I can't do that. Uh, but, yeah, I'm leaning... The, the fact that it saves a trade for me as well and then in one or two weeks, whatever, Tino's back, I can still look to get in, say, Payne Haas or Tino Pursua Malawi. I'm leaning towards option A. Yeah, I'd be leaning towards option A as well. I'm... Yeah, I, I'm not convinced on going Payne Haas. I'm going to leave him. I'm going to I'm going to wait for Tino to come back and, and go him instead. I, I just worry with Payne Haas that they could have a top two spot locked up early showers, early showers and shit. He's already he's got a buy in the mix there as well. Yeah, the buy is a bit of a dagger. Yeah, he's coming off an Origin series, had an injury throughout that. Yeah. I, I just think Tino is coming off a three week spell. Yep. 
to go fucking berserk for four weeks. He's 200k more. Yeah, I get it. But I will. I'll be tailoring my team to try and get to Tina in two yeah. weeks' time. But I would be taking option A if I yeah. was you. So that's it. Like it, it leaves me again. Teams completely set up. The weak point is my backup front row, uh, but I'm thinking the same at 808k. Tino, in a couple of weeks' time, when he's back, going uh, whoever I've got left over there, probably Peachy, Peachy to Tino. Yeah, and then that gives me depth across every position, and that'd still give me four trades in the bank, potentially three if I need to cash in someone. But and then I'd basically have them for the run home. I'll be saving one trade for that round 26 when the bunnies are on the buy. I'm pretty stocked on them, so I'd, I'll be looking to trade out one of them guys. Yep. Just the one trade that week? Well, it depends how the trade situation's going. If I've got me up my sleeve and I'm short on players, I'll use two, but we'll just lot can change between now and then. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, I'm um I think that South Sydney we've spoken about it before, but I think South Sydney's really interesting. I've got a few but I'm gonna have a lot of bunnies now. But I, I think that they're yes, you're not gonna have them round twenty six, but you're one hundred percent gonna have them in round twenty seven, which to me is <laughs> very appealing for that Roosters matchup. I think they're going to go bonkers over the next month. Yep. Uh, they're back to full strength minus Totola. They've got a soft draw. They're sitting ninth. I mentioned the bloke potty on Monday that I still think they're going to make the top four. I shouldn't say going to. I still think they're a red-hot chance because I think they win every game on the run home. Yep. Four and against comes into it, and they'll need to up where they're at. So they need to blow out some scores, which we know they can do. And I just think they're, I think they're the team target. Yeah. Hey, how are you feeling about it, Matty? Yeah, it's it's kind of like we've been waiting for this run home, waiting for the players to come back, waiting for the run home. They were sh- shocking on Friday, but as long as they can not chop some wins, because they've we've lost they've lost six out of the last eight or something. So they just need to get some wins on the board, need to get some confidence. But we saw in round one to ten they can beat all the big dogs, so yeah. not concerned in the slightest. But they just can't drop any of these soft games. I, I know all the chat, and I've been guilty of it as well. Just saying, oh, when Latrell Mitchell's back, when Latrell Mitchell's back. Fuck, you're a different football team when Harm, Sally and Totola are on the field. Oh, 100%. It, it is night and day when you're both there. It was the first thing that I noticed the other night when it, yeah. it was Totola that didn't play. Yeah, yeah, they, they missed out. Totola so badly. Me, me and Matty had the same combo. I just went, oh, trail out and that sort of thing, how poor they were. I was like, they, they, was, they looked complacent to me. That they, they scored on the edge early and that was only because Katoni sort of half-slipped and had a shocking missed tackle on AJ. They kept going wide. They just they missed Totola getting it. And just trucking it up yeah. and get him going forward. Gee, they missed him. Big time. Um, <laughs> so my trade situation, I uh, I know we mean Please say Cam Murray. Please say Cam Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Not Cam Murray. Your pride's too much to get him in, isn't it? One hundred percent. Yeah. Um we so we spoke last week or the week before about me potentially nothing out hooker. You didn't like the move. I decided off the back of Latrell being ruled out. It allowed me to do it, so I went ahead and did it. So congratulations to the West Tigers 18th man in New South Wales Cup this week who's come into my side, which freed up cash, which I thought I would <laughs> need to get to Latrell and Cody this week. But then, of course, Sifa got ruled out. Yeah. But it's still it's still just giving me cash to play with them. With the amount of trades I've got, I'm okay with doing that. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to bring in Walker, Trell this week. And then, as I said, I'm going to move to Gutho to a slightly cheaper fullback, whoever that might be, and then bring in Tino. Um, in two weeks' time. So my plan is to make, if everything goes to plan, I will not make a trade next week. Canterbury's got the buy. I don't miss anyone from Canterbury. Um, and then I'll be able to make a move on those guys. So I'm going to have, I think, six trades. No, what I, at the end of this week, I'm going to have eight trades left. I'm, not, I'm planning to not use any next week. Then I'll use two the week after. So I'll have six Two every tra- week, essentially, for the run home. I, th- I think I'll have six for the last four weeks. That makes sense? Or is it th- no, it's probably three weeks, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. Six rounds to go, you've got 10 trades. So if you don't trade next week, yeah, you're two trades a week. Yeah. So I'm going <sighs> to, yeah. Yeah, sitting pretty. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping for mass restings at the end of this so season. So am I. And I can, we can it, make it, moves. I, I do the same every year because I play that long game and build squad depth. This time of year, I don't even care if it's my players. I'm like, get ruled out. You know, wish injury upon anyone, but I'm like, the more carnage that can happen, the better. And last season, it was pretty tame by, end of year standards but this year we add in that there's a buy every week as well yeah so i'm saying mate just let the carnage ensue please and there's a lot of key <laughs> players with buys that i don't have as well over the next few weeks which really excites me um mate can i ask you this this is a little bit off topic but for this run home i've probably got enough trades to sort of mess around with it a little bit fuck that warriors drawer is appealing i don't have any of them at the moment. I've got Torhu, and he's probably the one I want the least out of all of them, mm. realistically. 
Have you had a look at S? Uh, like I, 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 I'm happy to stick with Cleary and Hines over SJ. I know yep. he's been in incredible form this year, but I'll stick with the pedigree that is, you know, tried and proven. Um, but guys like DWZ, even Chance, mate. Chance has been killing it. I, I've slept on him all year. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on those guys? DWZ, that right edge is so good. Yeah. Like, teams aren't getting near them. I can DWZ could be the player at 666K. I can't believe he's not more. For what um, he's been he had on. two... He had a 23 against the Bunnies. Yeah. That was in the torrential rain. So you can put a line through that as far as I'm concerned. And then he just had like 64, 95, 48. So he's dropped to, to a reasonable price. So, yeah, I can DWZ. Does it worry you at all scored a try against you guys on the weekend? Still only scored 48. Uh, it does. But I do think... The way that game played out, I thought the Raiders actually won the middle in that game. And that, I mean, I don't think that we did. We just, that's what helped, kept us in the game and gave us a, a fighter's chance to, to win that somehow. I just think the Warriors Park, fresh off the bye, will roll through teams on the way home. And off the back of that. <coughs> the other thing I will say about this Warriors side, this great draw home. Gold Coast, <coughs> Tigers, Manly, um, St. George. <coughs> We get to the last week. Do they bother sending their entire squad to Suncorp Stadium before potentially having a final the week after? I think so, because I reckon there's every chance they're playing for top four. Or you're thinking they might be cemented. I, I reckon there's a chance they'll be cemented. They're in there now, and they don't they, they play the bottom three teams five times each on the run home. Like I'm not sure how, if, if there's a good chance they don't drop another game here. Mm. I'm not sure if they bother sending. And you've got to remember as well, <coughs> they will go um, in round 25. They play Manly at Mount Smart. Round 26, they play St. George at Mount Smart. They could have three weeks at home before mm. they launch into finals. Definitely a chance. I yeah. reckon it's a serious yeah. chance that those guys could be rested in that last yeah. week. In which case, I'm okay with because Ryan Madison's the only Eels player that I own yep. when they're on the bye. I'll, I'll have Torhu and then let's say you bring in a warrior. I'd have two warriors if they want to rest anyone. And I've got the depth. I, I feel like I can cover it. Anyone, probably more consideration for now with a bunch of eels. But look, I think the damage that they could do in that time would outweigh it's the fact that if they got rested, yeah. yeah. yeah it's so, yeah, man, I think Dallin is so enticing. So next week, I, I, I'm sort of half looking at maybe factoring him into my trades. Even yeah. Yeah, Chance isn't a lot, lot more expensive, is he? Been killing it, Chance. Yeah. Because I like, yeah, I, I love Chance of football, but Christ, he's he's stealing so many points of SJ at the moment as well. Oh yeah. There's so many moments that SJ is totally <laughs> creating, and he, he's taking yeah. all the points. Which credit to him, that's what you do as a fullback. But all right, should we get some questions from people to finish off? Let's do it. All right, Jono, 29 thoughts on Big Mo for the <laughs> run home. We've already sort of spoken about him. My only worry, I love him for the next two weeks. Once Tino returns, I think he plays big minutes. I think they're using Chris Randall quite a bit now as well. I I don't think he's a bad pick, but I think over the next two weeks, you could get 70 to 80 points out of him. After that, I think it'll drop back a little bit, but I, I don't think there's going to be a huge gap between him and other guys. I also think the Titans in the position they're in, I think he's going to play every game on the run home. Mm. Started the season with a three-round average of like 40 points. Since then... He hasn't scored under 53. Since round 10, he scored under 50 once. Sorry, under 60 once, and that was a 53. Rock solid. He's that... Isn't he just that stereotypical front row that we allude to that he's rock solid with no upside, which is fine. The, the fact is this week that People are needing a front row because AFB's out, Torhu's out, Tino's out for anyone that held him. 600K is affordable. He's a fine trade in. That being said, I'm paying up the extra money for Payne Haas if, I, if I'm getting a front row him. And I'd be paying up the extra money for Tino. And then time. even Tino, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I also <clears> just <throat> think if you're going to use trades at the back end of this season, they can't be for good front rowers. They have to be for fucking outstanding front rowers. Exactly. And like, 
for people that have got three front row, good front rowers out there, let's say you're running Payne Haas, Joe Tarpany, and Torhu Harris. Yep. I wouldn't be wasting a trade on a front rower. Maybe Tino in a few weeks and come back. But if you've got enough depth to cover back end of the season front row, I'd be looking elsewhere. I keep saying it, but I just don't think it's the position to make up ground. The other thing is Titans in 14th. They're not playing finals footy. They probably don't need to bust him with huge minutes every week, as said, yep. especially when Tino's back. So, Yep, I agree. <laughs> um, okay, let's have a look uh, from Ben So Kirk says, is Fafita a must-have for the run home, given his draw, et cetera? I might just throw to you, mate. What, what are your thoughts on Fafita? If you're low on trades and whatnot, is he a must-have? I don't think so f- for that exact reason. They've got – so he played – he got an early shower on the weekend because the score line was – the game was over. Played 60 minutes. You look, particularly at head to head finals, if you're a head to head focused player, Warrior, if you have grand finals in round 26, check your settings, it might be round 27, but I think most of the grand finals in round 26. Round 23, Warriors, round 24, Sharks, round 25, Panthers, round 26, Storm. If the Titans are down by a margin in any of those games, I think he gets the early shower because he's had such a big season and they don't need to bust him. So while he's certainly a good trading option, no doubting that. I don't think he's a must-have. What do you think? Um, I, I've always had him, and I'm very happy to have him. And I mean, mate, even in the weekend, you're right, he got a 20-minute early shower. He scored 57 with no big attacking stats at all. And there's a couple of games here that I think you look at and go, oh, fuck. Cronulla don't worry me. Melbourne don't worry me. Melbourne at Amy, though. In, in, in Melbourne. Mate, that right edge for Melbourne yeah. is in absolute tatters at the moment. Yeah. You give Cam Mun- like you, you, I, I, I'm, I'm very worried about that right edge for Melbourne. I think it's a great spot to target. Yeah. Uh, Stevie Hebner from your Supercoach Playbook, he said to me last week, I was considering as a pod play going Bradman best, and I did the same thing. I went, oh, Melbourne, I don't know. And he went, mate, have you watched that Melbourne yeah, right edge? It's defense? trash. I watched it closer on the weekend. They are in all sorts. Yeah. Absolute all sorts. New faces so, coming in now as well. Yeah, so they, like th- th- those last two weeks, he could explode, I reckon. So, um God, he's right on that edge of, I don't want to call him an absolute must-have, but I reckon he's closer to must-have than away from it, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, if I didn't own, I'd be buying, but I I don't think he's a must-have at all. Interesting. Have you got him? Yeah. Okay. Bugger. And I'm very happy about it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry <laughs> I've got him. Yeah, yeah. I said sure. if I didn't, I'd be looking to buy, yeah. but I don't think he's a must-have. All right, from Sam Wong, Latrell mm. or Fafita, pick one. I guess you're going Latrell. Yeah. Yep. Um, Adrian Phillip Barnes. That is a fantastic name. Uh, people trading out Torhu. Do you hold with Warriors easy draw post buys? What are your thoughts on Torhu Harris? I own him and... I own him too, yeah. Not stoked. Yeah, I'm not happy with it. Just... It's, it hasn't been bad enough to me, for me to do something about it yet. But no. It's like, played 56 minutes... Against the Raiders last week, 52 points. He had 50 in base in 56 minutes. Absurd. Yeah. The week before the Sharkies, that was the game. He left injured early, and they, I think they said they they pumped him, hey? They are up comfortably, and they just gave him the, the share, early shower. I think he came back right at the end for a little bit, so I was like, he was fine. I just think because he's got these niggling injuries, they didn't need to. Like Prior to that, he hadn't scored in like eight weeks below 56. Yeah. I just wonder, I said, with that draw, they get out some leads. Does he get early showers? Probably. And mate, as I said before, if I could bet on someone not being sent, flown to Brisbane yeah, to play that last totally. game, it probably won't matter. It's him. So, yeah. But as I said, I'm like, front row's such a bland position to make moves in. The other thing with him is that I, I love the way the Warriors are playing their footy. And you're right, even if he does get an early shower with that 50 minutes, if, if they're tearing sides apart, like how many try assists has he picked up this year? Yeah. Putting forwards. His ball playing has been so brilliant. It's, it's been fantastic. So that's the gamble you take. But I can understand moving on to Tohu Harris. And to be honest with you, there's a chance that he might end up being the one that I move on to for Tino. It'll Me be too. Him or Jack DeBellin. Me too, yeah. Have you, got, you don't have Jack DeBellin, eh? No. My guy is leaking cash. <laughs> he is all over the place. They've so. been a real mixed bag for you this year, the Dragons, I haven't have they? Ever. My God. Shout out to Jacob Little. Did his time. 
I really appreciated him. Um, by the way, I feel like I need to have like a moment of silence or something for Phoenix Crossland. Finally sold yeah. him this week. How good has he been? He might be my player of the year. Yeah. I'm not even slightly kidding. He's been so important to me. It's, it's ridiculous. What pushed you to buy him? <laughs> well, I sort of, I thought, who's the ugliest bloke I can trade <laughs> in this week? Yeah, you got it eked a little bit out of him more than I did, but he was outstanding, wasn't he? Did you put me onto him? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Of course I did. And no, no one was going to You'll throw the kid a bait sometimes. And, and it was a, 5'8 was a real problem area at the time. Yep. It was a bit of a wasteland for a, a bunch of different reasons. Uh, and we got him cheap. We earned money out of him. He scored well in weeks that we need him to across that origin period. And I remember like halfback for a bit there was a little bit iffy as well. And yep. he was just, with that dual 5'8 halfback, he was so valuable. So, yeah, a well-deserved shout-out to Fiends. What a job he's done. Yeah, and he um, he's now playing if not 80, 75 minutes yeah. at the moment. So you could get more out of him realistically. Uh, but yeah, he's been tremendous. Phoenix Crossland, forgot where I was going with that. Uh, Aaron Church, 77. Uh, I have, <laughs> I don't know if this was a sledge on you or if this was just a comment. I couldn't work it out. I have the same long sleeve shirt Tim had on last night on his potty. I wear mine to bed. Aaron's a fashionable man. Fashionable man. He's doing well. Yeah. I couldn't tell if it was a dig at you or not. I'm going to take it as it was. Yeah, I'm a bit torn as well, but I think deep down I know that he's taking a crack and <laughs> I am not a fashionable man. So. Reach out, Aaron. What shirt was it? <laughs> Just a blue long sleeve. Yeah, right. First, time, first potty appearance for it. On debut. Owned it for about six years. Wanted about three times. It was time. Aaron's coming to him. That was good. Love that. <laughs> uh, Anthony Zama, six trades left. Worth using my boost. If I was Anthony Zama, which I'm not, but if I was, I would be holding a boost till the last week. What are your thoughts? It's all team dependent. Mm. Does he need to make three big trades this week? Does he have depth? Is he shot for numbers this week? I, I like Without seeing the team, I, I, it's hard to say. I, I think being able to make three trades in that last week when there's resting, I reckon that'd be huge. Yeah. Very, very appealing. Yeah. Especially if you have got those three trades, like, and if the restings aren't as bad as, as I'm anticipating anyway, you can nuff someone out and buy whoever you want. The, the, the other one is even round 26, potentially. If you're sitting there with four or five Bunnies players and, and they're, you know, restings that week or whatever, people want to, clubs want to get players going into fight. I don't know. I don't know. Next one comes from Anton, one of the great Warriors fans of all time. Great fellow as well. He says, Matty Lodge as a cash grab. Now, Matty Lodge is at 420k, played 52 minutes on the weekend, 51 in base, had some abating stats as well, which is not unlike Matty Lodge, to be fair. <laughs> Scored 65. Um, we've obviously had Aloye go down. We've had Paseca go down. Shout out to Paseca. I could not watch that either. That hurt me watching it. That was brutal. Um, he's going to play big minutes over the next few weeks. I think they're going to call on him to create offloads and second phase footy. Tell you what, if he was 100k cheaper, I don't know if I'd be able to turn him down. <laughs> To free up some cash and then go to a big dog in a few weeks' time. Yeah. Makes me a bit snoozy, to be honest. Bring in a 425k front row plotter this mm -hmm. time of year. I, I know they're low on front rowers, but I just feel like we've been here time and time again with Matt Lodge. He's at a new club. He They've picked a four-forward bench. Yep. Is it a concern? A real concern? If there was a utility back there, it would change the story a little bit. My laptop has just died, but... Did he offload all last week? The offload always has been, always will with the big one with Matt Lodge and a lot of these front rowers. If he's given that license and he can pop four or five offloads, sweet. If mm -hmm. he's not, like no interest. I don't have interest anyway, but... Did he off I, I think if, if you've got the trades, I don't mind it as a play because I think he, he, like he's a guy that when, when he plays 50 minutes, his average is like 55 or something. That's off the dome from the last few years. Yeah. And I think he'll play 55 to 60 minutes. Yeah. And he's probably one HIA from pushing that even fucking further, realistically. So you, should you are it. right, though. It's a very yeah. good point, and I just said it myself too as well. It's a good point. The front row forward probably isn't the place to gain. Yeah. But oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't hate it. I won't be doing it. And I've got the trade still, but I won't be doing it. Yep. Uh, here's a good one from 10 in the bin. You and Timmy went out for breakfast. How would you get your eggs? For me, it depends on the breakfast. Shout out 10 in the bin. Great content, super coach. I... Uh, I think you're a scramble guy. Yeah, I, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a sucker for eggs, Benny. Mm. In which case, poached all Gosh. day, every day. Bit yeah. of hollandaise sauce over the top. Thank you. Uh, much like my super coach, long term trade plans. I'm pretty versatile. 
I'm happy to switch between poached and scrambled. Yeah, I'm very similar. When you get well scrambled eggs, whoo. I just can't poach an egg well at home. I know everyone says, you can do it at home. It's not as good. Don't tell me it's as good. Mate, one of my few cooking attributes, I can and will poach an egg. I refuse to believe that. Let it, you let it, wait till it's boiling, mate. Drop it in, three minutes max, bang. No, I'm not buying it. Matty, where do you sit? Yeah, I have the exact same reasoning as you, Guru, because I can do every other egg, but at home I just can't nail the poached one. So when I go out to breakfast, I treat myself with a poached egg. Yeah, Mascot Corner Cafe, poached eggs. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Remember when we were in uh, Rockhampton, it was about 80 degrees and we were yeah. sweating, and we introduced him to the iced coffee. Changed his life. Yeah, I'd never had an iced coffee. Game yeah. changer. No, Didn't surprise me either. No, no, no. You used to push me to get it. I still didn't get it, and I still refused to have it. Idiot. Fucking idiot. Oh. God, it was hot that day. Yeah. It was stinking hot. That was rank. I, I I got sick that trip from having my air con on so high just to survive. It was. Jeez, I hope we reach on tour again next year. That was so much fun. I think if we don't, we go anyway. Let's beers and break even regional tour. Beers and break even regional tour. Yeah, and we had a few beers and break. Just go to Coom- Cooma for a month and go to Coffee's Hotel. Love that. <laughs> Connor Rolf, JDB, a trade or a hold. I've got him. He's not really doing much for me. I I'm planning on trading him. I. Have not kept an eye on him, and but I think again it comes back to your front row. Like, do you have three front rowers in there? Are you like if you've got three front rowers and you don't really necessarily need to play them each week, and you're low on trades, you, you probably don't need to move to it pretty quickly. So, I'd hold. You're not going to want to play him in your seventeen, mm. but if you do have to, he's not going to let you down. Speaking of JDB, if you do have him, enjoy him for now because I am so sick of listening to that commentary whenever Shane Flanagan's on a Dragons game. Just absolutely bags the fact that he's playing 80 minutes. So next year, uh, I don't think it'll be an option yeah. anymore just quietly. You just if you've got it. trades up your sleeve, like let's say six plus, by all means trade him. If you're lower than that, if you're like four su- sub four, you probably don't need to. Now this question came from a lot of people who have like two to four trades left, getting very short. Do I hold and wait? Or do they just go fucking and bring in Latrell and Cody this week? It could be the best. Possible I'd get, I'd get, I'd get one of them. Yeah, I'd be, I'd pull the trigger on one of them because if the bunnies go on an absolute tear, which as I'm, I think they will, them two could average a hun- over hundred in that time. And you'd, ha- if you don't have both of them, it could just tear your part. I'd get, I'd use the pull the trigger on one of them. If you had that trade, money didn't matter. Which one would you go for? Coming to you next, Maddie. So brace yourself. Latrell or Cody? Oh, I think that Darusi made a good point last night. No, I was chatting about like who I should VC out of Cody and Latrell, and Darusi just threw back to the old classic. He said Latrell scares me more. Yep. I think Latrell. Yeah, I agree, Maddie. Oh, it's so tough because they can both just murder any team at any point. I would probably, I would probably go Cody. Only because, whilst Latrell definitely does scare me more, and he's you know, you could argue he's the best player in the comedy, blah blah blah. If they get if it's 20, 20, 26 nil, I expect Cody Walker to kick on more than Latrell. You know what I mean? Mm. But that's a that's a very very weak reasoning. It could be either. Well, it's not though. Like if they, if, if they do get out to lead, you're right. Surely you're going to rest Latrell first. But I I I just think that with the way that super coach points are given nowadays. The fullback over the five Sweet. eights every day of the week. Exactly. And, and we've like. seen him take so many points away from Cody when he's on deck yep. because he sweeps and gets the try assist. And the other factor is, let's say they do start putting a few 40-point plus score lines on, it's a lot of goals it's up a lot of sleeve. goals, yeah. So, Matty, he'll goal kick, right? He'll come back in and goal kick, Latrell? You'd imagine so. Yeah. Because Taft's not playing, and I think, we was discussing yesterday, mm. I think the next one's Cook. So I think it might be Tass. Yeah, so I'll mention in the comments yeah. Tass potentially. Tass. Really? A few people say Tass to me yesterday. Interesting. I assumed I was on the show. I wasn't. But be, be, because it's so... Fancy listening to a show for four hours and not realising I'm not there at any point. Anyway. Kerry's been quiet this week. <laughs> um, but yeah, the fact that they are lacking the goal kicker will be... It's going to push Latrell to kick even more. Yeah. Yeah. I think Latrell would be my play just because of fullback and goal kicking. But uh, big one. Yeah, there. I think... So I'd lean towards Latrell. Yeah. All right. Uh, trades. We've spoken about our trades, but skippers this week, mate. Uh, we're both bringing in Latrell. <laughs> He's got to be a VC, doesn't he? I'll be VCing him. Yeah. Could would you consider captaining him? 
I don't really have to in my yeah. situation. Yeah. Let's say you, you don't have the free crack, which most people wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just, I really, I also like Cleary up against that shark's edge as well, though. Like that yeah, shark's right. left edge is so bad defensively. I think Cleary's going to have a field day on them. Yeah, I agree. Cleary's very appealing. Um, what about Reese Walsh, if you've got him as a pod play against the Roosters? VC? I suppose it makes it hard, though, because then you can't get Latrell. He's fine, but I just think the Bunnies-Tigers game is the one to target with your VC. So the other one that I don't mind is a little pod captain. I wouldn't do it myself, but if you can work it out to get a VC on him, Ruben Garrick against the Dragons. Yeah. He's doing nothing and scoring 65s. If he, if he has a good game and he's just on the inside of, you know, some breaks or whatever and kicks goals, like that, the headwind he had to kick into the other day, I think he only kicked shocker, three yeah. from seven. He, he, he could turn up very easily in this game. He, he could. The only issue there is, as we just spoke about, just missing Prosecco and Alloy, just a bit light up front. Yep. Does that bring Manly back to the pack a fair bit? Probably. probably. Yep. It's a fair yeah, so yeah. I mean, Bunnies are under the target, VC, and Cleary, I think, is the man man to skip. Probably guys that we don't talk about enough because we don't have him, but, mate, drink water against the Titans. <laughs> We never talk about him because we don't have Because we him, don't yeah. want to talk about yeah, him. I don't want to think about him. But uh, he's got to be considered. Like, if we get to the end of this week and he's the top scorer, okay, yeah, fair play. Of that course, mate. The form he's in, you could captain him any day yeah. of the week. What about Val Holmes in that guy? Expecting a big one from him. Mate, Val Holmes got sim in the other night, did nothing, and scored 60. Like 50. I think he updated to 60. Nah, 50. He was on oh, 40. 50, sorry, yeah. He yeah. was on 40. I'm like, beauty, look at my lips. He updated to 50. I'm like, from what? He didn't insane. do anything. He literally oh, did nothing. He spent 10 minutes off the field. He got a penalty on that play. He got Simbin. Like, unbelievable. Yeah. I think there are better options than him this week. Yeah. I'd look elsewhere. Yeah. I think Cleary against that edge is the best shout, and I think Luttrell. Mm. Would you – is it 100% Luttrell over Cody as far as a vice-captain captain for you? I think I've settled on it, yeah. I was completely torn, and I asked Ads last night. He said Luttrell, and Desi said – Cody, I'm like, thanks, lads. Um, but, yeah, I, I just think if they put a score on him, Trell's kicking, you know, seven or eight goals with a bit of luck and could go bonkers. Are you worried at all about Latrell taking away from Cody? Uh, yeah, but they also link up a lot. Yeah. Like, they can both turn up. Okay. And Cody plays better when Latrell's playing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, off the back of everything. Yeah, no, I'm okay with it. All right. Well, well, what are your thoughts on the right edge, Matty? Do you still think it's going to get the same amount of ball? like, Or do you think they'll transition back to that heavy left? Oh, I mean, they started the year going pretty equally. So yeah. I don't see why not. Like Campbell Graham was the top try scorer before the trial got injured. So I don't see why not. Yeah, They, they, were, they were almost heavier on the right edge. Like mm. They're having more success down the right. They so were. I think it doesn't matter. Yeah. Campbell Graham in my side, mate. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to nice own him. Sitting there. If I didn't, nice. if I wasn't stacked with bunnies, I'd get him in for sure. Yeah. All right, we're done and dusted. We are, mate. Guys, go and grab yourself a case of bloke in a bar this weekend. We're at the beer footy and festival, beer footy food festival. I probably got that wrong. One of those. I know it starts with beer, yeah. and we had a great time. That was a fantastic afternoon out there. It was unreal, and so many bloke fans out there. Merch flying Cracking around left, right and centre. It was fantastic. So great to see you all out there. Go grab yourself a case this week. Uh, Blue Wealth Property, they've got their events coming up, the webinars. So we'll give you more details over the next few weeks. And if you want to reach out, we'll give you the link. Uh, and, mate, what, what did you talk about on Playbook last night? We did a deep dive into the head-to-head -head finals fixtures, the, yeah, okay. the, the clubs with the, the best and worst draws. So, yeah, for head-to-head -head specific players, those rounds 23 to 26, teams to target, players to target and avoid. Uh, it was a good chat. Yeah, fingers crossed you're a genuine head-to-head -head player, not one that's uh, fallen into the trap of head-to-head. -head. <laughs> yeah, you, you've been bastards. forced. Yeah, all of a sudden, oh, no, I've actually always been a head-to-head -head player, as you're coming 47,000th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a head-to-head -head player via submission. Yeah. Hurts. <laughs> Matty, anything you want to say before you go, mate? No. Hey, where, where's your team sitting? What, what's doing? Uh, I've actually I've gone decent the last few weeks. Uh, wait, let Here me we get go. it up. It'll be like two thousand. Yeah, yeah. Nah, 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 nah. My ranking's still bad because um, I had a couple of shockers. Yeah. Uh, How bad? A couple months ago. Talking? Oh, I dropped I dropped like ten thousand spots one week. It was it was a bad week. It's a tough week. But besides <laughs> that, but week. yeah, but besides that, I've, I've got to set my reserves. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sp I spoke to Maddie a week or two ago, and he said. He's had two years of sort of meandering on Supercoach, getting his head around it. Next year, with some experience under his belt, is the year he goes back. Yeah, bang. is next year the one? You're going to have a red I, hot crack? Because I've had like a more crack than ever this year. Yeah. And I've like, 
and it's around 22 and I'm still like doing the my crazy year, stuff. Next year. Um, so yeah, next year. Next year's the year. Next year's the year. Yeah. Go on, love that. We'll have to keep more track of it next year. We will. Maddie. Mm. All right, we're done. Thanks for coming. We will see you next Wednesday.